Hello and welcome to the overview of CruiseM focusing on VTMS application. My name is Marko Kolaric and I'm an analysis engineer at AVL Advanced Simulation Technologies. Vehicle thermal management requires the consideration of the entire vehicle, meaning that several subsystems such as the engine, the driveline, the cooling circuit, etc. need to be considered. In the past, this meant that engineers had to set up the interfaces between the tools by different software suppliers. In Cruise M, that's not necessary. Let's have a look at the demo model. In it, you can find the driveline, the engine, the solid structure, the cooling circuit, the radiator air path, and the oil circuit. Let's have a closer look. Simply double-click on either of the subsystems to reveal its contents. Let's start with the driveline. It represents a front-wheel driven vehicle with a 5-speed manual gearbox. Using this dashed green connection here, it is directly connected to the engine. You can leave the subsystem by using the breadcrumbs at the top of the topology editor. Now let's have a look at the engine. The engine is a 1.5 liter 4-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine. This large cylinder block component is a subsystem in itself. Double click on it to see what's behind it. As you can see, we model four cylinders here. The cylinder is a subsystem as well. Double click on it to see its content. In the heart of it all, we have the combustion chamber. This is where the combustion parameters are defined and where fuel is converted into energy. Some heat is also generated during the combustion process and it transferred to the thermal structure. It is the purpose of these five components to establish just how much of this heat generated during the combustion is transferred to which part of the structure. We are considering the heat transferred to the intake port, the piston, the head, the liner and the exhaust port. We do this for all four cylinders. This means that we have 20 outgoing thermal connections. We are also considering the heat transfer from the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold and the turbine. Since we're here, pay special attention to the three green dashed lines. The first one, as already mentioned earlier, is directly connected to the clutch in the driveline, while the lower two are driving the pumps that are propelling the coolant and the oil, and this way mechanical losses can be considered directly. Let's talk about the thermal structure. The heat transfer to the structure is transferred from the four combustion chambers using these red connections here. Red indicates a thermal connection. So let's have a closer look at the solid structure. On the left hand side you can see a bunch of dashed red connections which are basically just transferring the information about the heat generated in the engine. Let's talk about the piston, for example. For reasons of simplification, we modeled all four pistons with a single solid mass. Of course, the piston is always in contact with other parts of the engine, for example, with the liner. To consider this, we can just model a liner, or in our case, four liners represented as one solid mass, and just connect them thermally with a heat transfer connection. It is also in contact with the crank train, which we also model as a single mass, and so on and so forth. On the right hand side, you can see a bunch of red connections which are leaving the subsystem. These connections are used to transfer the heat distributed throughout the engine structure to the coolant and the oil system. Now let's have a look at the coolant system. This part here is the cooling jacket. This is where most of the heat is transferred from the structure to the coolant. The coolant is driven by a pump, which is directly mechanically driven by the engine. We can model the thermostat by using the valve component in combination with a couple of basic control components. The radiator down here, modeled by a liquid heat exchanger, is rejecting heat into the ambient using this red thermal connection. Let's move on to the oil system. Similar to the coolant circuit, the pump is directly driven by the engine using this green mechanical connection, 
and the oil is receiving heat from the structure using these red thermal connections. We have one more subsystem left and this is the radiator air path. Its topology is very simple. We have a system boundary on one side and this one is also considering the vehicle velocity to account for the ramp flow and we have a system boundary on the other side. This one is only used to delimit the system. In between we have a fan which is inducing some mass flow and also a pressure rise while here we have a thermal connection with a couple of thermal components. And this part is basically used to exchange the heat between the radiator as I've previously shown you in the cooling system and the air flowing through it. This concludes the overview of the subsystems. At this point I would like to mention that if you are in need of electrical components for the driveline model the solution is quite simple. You simply take your old cruise model, compile it as an FMU, and then using this FMU interface component, import it into Cruise M, hook it up to the flange, and you can then connect the flange directly to the engine, much the same as you would do with a Cruise M driveline. You can switch between the two in a matter of seconds. Using the layer configurations dialog, it is very easy and convenient to switch between different layers. Once all this is set up, you are ready to run the simulation. Move to the simulation step and press run. The simulation center is fully customizable. You can set up some gauges to monitor the vehicle velocity and the engine speed, set up some curves to monitor the structure temperatures, or set up a table to look at some of the numerical values. Once the simulation had finished, you can post-process the results. Using the animation and the pie chart features, you can observe the distribution of the energy in the vehicle at any given time step. You can also monitor the temperatures of the solids and the fluids and assess the fuel consumption in the drive cycle. The energy flow graphics results or the EFG results are also available. It's quite handy for an engineer to be able to observe the distribution of the mass flow in the coolant system. Using EFG and the animation feature he can do that easily. As the mass flow through a certain branch increases, the line gets thicker and as it decreases it gets thinner. A numerical value is also available at every component. Thank you for watching the introduction to cruise and flow for VTMS applications.